Hello and welcome back to my channel. Last week I posted a video about 10 ways teachers could use Google Forms in the classroom. And tonight we're slowing down a bit and looking at one specific way that we can use Google Forms in the classroom, and that is to create an exit ticket. And exit tickets are just great because we can know right away if our students understood the material from that day and the topic that we presented on. So we're going to slow down a little bit and you're going to get to be able to see this in live time on how we create an exit ticket in Google Forms. If you are watching this on the replay or you're watching it live, put those questions and comments that you have in the comments and we will get to those uh, throughout the night in the comments. I'll be dropping links and uh, can answer those through the comments. So. Uh, please get those questions there and you can also get Google Forms up yourself and be able to come with us as we show you how to create an exit ticket so you can create your own. Okay, so we're going to we're going to create our own. So I'm just going to do a blank one and I'll just call it exit ticket. Here's where you would give instructions to your students. So it can say complete the exit ticket at the end of class. Please use complete sentences and show what you know. So the first question normally is their student's name. We want this to be a required question. You'll notice that Google Forms automatically knew that I wanted a short answer. So I'm going to leave that question option as short answer. I'm going to make it required. And then I'm going to add a question. Now, if I'm just using this exit ticket for one class, then I am just going to go right into the questions. But if you want to know which class this student is in, uh, then we can say uh, class, and then we can give them some drop down options. We could use the multiple choice or we could do drop down. And so I'm just going to say which class, uh, let's say, let's use English in this instance. English seven, if I can spell English correctly. English. <laughs> Maybe I need to use copy paste here. So I'm a little better at this. There we go. That's a little faster. And English 12. So I don't have to have this option, but if you want to know specifically which class that's coming in for and you're using this exit ticket for multiple classes, which I'd highly suggest because we're going to create it once and you're going to be able to use it again and again, uh, then we're going to make that required and they will have to select which class they are in before they can submit this exit ticket. And I'm just gonna go up here and do one housekeeping thing. I'm just gonna click Untitled Form and that's going to change it to whatever I named my form. So if I said Exit Ticket, it's going to change the file name to Exit Ticket instead of just that Untitled. Now I'm going to add another question. And if I'm doing a three, two, one questioning, then I'm going to have them say uh, three things uh, let, let's make this better. Three words or ideas that you learned today. So these could be new things. These could be uh, things they already knew. Uh, this could be uh, <laughs> written better, obviously, but they're going to give you three words or ideas that they learned today or that are sticking out in their mind. And we'll keep that as paragraph form and we'll say required. And I can duplicate this one if I want it to be pretty much the same thing, except I'm going to change this to uh, two, let's say, two ways you could apply this to your own life or future uh, career or interests. Okay, I'm just coming up with these, so <laughs> they can be whatever, three anything to anything. I do like my last question of uh, what is one question you still have about this topic? I do like it to be that because I like to know uh, what question did they not raise their hand in class for that I can answer or further explain for them. So I do like my one to be one more question that you have. Uh, notice that when I did duplicate 
It duplicated exactly what it was. I just redid the question. It knew I wanted a paragraph, but then it also kept this required option on. So had I just went to add a question, it would have untoggled required. It would have put this one, you know, back to multiple choice and I would have had to reselect those uh, if it didn't automatically know I wanted a paragraph again. So uh, it's not super quick to use this button in this example, but using other Google Forms, this duplicate option can really come in handy, especially if you had a lot of multiple choice options. This is just a really quick and easy exit ticket though. And really this is ready to go. So I can click on send and I can go get the link here and I'm going, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring it over to my learning management system. We'll use Google Classroom as the example. I'm going to go to classwork and create material because I want to use it again and again. So I want to say exit ticket and um, we will call this one, let's just say exit ticket. I already used 321 I saw, so I'll just use it without the dashes so we know what it's called. And then I will go into my drive because it's actually created already in Google Drive. If you're using another learning management system, then you're going to use that link that we just copied. But since it's Google and Google, I can go into my drive here and just do this exit ticket that we just created. So I'm going to click add and then I can give some instruction. Uh, I'm going to not put it under a topic. This is just my own personal preference. You can have it. Maybe you have a number of exit tickets and you tell them which one to do. So maybe it's going under a topic of exit tickets, but I like to leave it untopicked, if that's a word, and it will just show up at the top and then I can send it out to all of my classes if I wanted. So everybody gets this exit ticket because we did put those options in there for all of my classes. Now I know I've got different classes here than my English example. Uh, but then I can say post or I can schedule it later, but I'm going to post it right now. And now when students come in and at the end of class, I can just say, complete your exit ticket for the day. And they automatically know it's at the top of their classwork. I need to submit this exit ticket before I leave. It can just be classroom culture that that's what they do. They go in here, click on the exit ticket. They type in their name. They choose that they're in English 9. Three words that they used or learned about today. And I'm just going to do this because for the sake of time. But they would fill this exit ticket out and say submit. Now, if I go in and submit another response, um, maybe this is Jane and she's also in English nine and I'll do this really easy, but I'll put some words in here. Uh, I am not sure who the main character is. So we'll just put that. It's not really a question. I'm sure who the main character is. I should write a question if I'm asking for a question, but we'll put that. Uh, I will jump back to this exit ticket. And now you can see we have two responses. So I can click here. I don't really like to look at it in this format. I can if I want to, uh, but since we've set this up for multiple grades to uh, submit to the same exit ticket, I'm going to use the sheets option, link to sheets. I'm going to say create. And it's going to create this spreadsheet for me. I'm going to get a timestamp of when, exactly when they submitted this exit ticket. And then I should notice that all my English nines should stack together. And then let's say English 11 is next, then they should all come in here, right? So I should be able to see that break through the class uh, that they selected. But then also I should be able to see a timestamp uh, break in time there as well. So that's why you don't necessarily need the class option. Uh, you can just look at your timestamps, but I kind of like to have it if I'm using that same exit ticket for a number of classes. So this is where I'm able to really quickly go through my English 9 students and see if they're connecting the dots with the words or ideas that we talked about today. Uh, you know, and I'm able to see which students aren't connecting, you know, really not sure what was happening or all that good stuff. Uh, three ways that I can apply it. This is where I can really look in and see do they understand, you know, how we're going to use this out in the real world? Um, it's kind of a 
you know, a look into their mind without specifically asking them in person, uh, I'll say, you're able to see if they are connecting the dots. And then this is the big one. What questions do you still have? What can I still help you with? Now, another one that I like to put on exit tickets, if I can go back to this question, I can say something like, um, how comfortable are you with this topic? How comfortable are you with the topic we learned about today? And I can say, or I can say how, let's say it like this, how well do you understand the topic we learned about today? Um, we can say one to five, so I do not understand at all. I feel confident in this topic. And we'll even put, I feel very confident in this topic. And I'll make this required. And when we go preview this, you can see that they have to give a scale. So then when I go to my responses, it will create another column here. And I'm going to be able to see where my fives are, where my ones are, you know, and who maybe needs a little bit more support. So I like to add that as an option on my exit tickets, uh, just so I can kind of gauge the classroom and see exactly where we're at, uh, see how comfortable they are with that. Now, an exit ticket can also just be uh, as simple as asking one question, and we're going to say name. And then again, if you want to add the uh, class option, and you can just say, what did you learn today, right? And they just tell you exactly what they learned. Uh, you get an inside look at what they're thinking, and you know if they got it or they didn't get it, right? It's also just a recap kind of wrapping up that hour if you're a high school uh, teacher uh, or wrapping up that idea for elementary. You know, what What did we learn today? Let's wrap this up. Tell me what you know, right? Uh, it can just be as simple as that. And then I can have this exit ticket one question. Maybe I make a topic of the two of these and I have one as a, a one question and one as a three, two, one. And I tell them which exit ticket to use. Um, but you can have exit tickets you know, really, really simplistic. And I'll just change that to that. And then you can go in your responses tab and get that link to the sheets and they can just be really, really easy. So let me know if you have questions in the comments on how to create exit tickets or any questions about uh, Google Forms. I can certainly answer those. There are a ton of settings uh, that you can use in Google Forms that we go over uh, more so in our Top Tech Tools for Teachers course. And I'll drop a link to that uh, for you. If you want to take a course on that, you can take it for credit or you don't have to take it for credit. Uh, some of the settings that I really like are make this a quiz and then I can have it auto grade for me. Or you can go into appearance up here and change the theme if you want it to be a different color uh, or if you want to add an image. You can do all those things. There are some that are already in here that you can use. We can add jelly beans to the top if we want. And now we've got a different color with jelly beans, a little bit more exciting uh, exit ticket. So there's a lot of different options within Google Forms as it is. And so please let me know if you have any questions about that. And uh, also check out the other 10 ways that I posted about last week. If you want to know more ideas, and let me know with any questions. Okay, we will talk soon.